Welcome, fifth graders, to uh, your second podcast of this chapter. Uh, so this chapter, we're going or this lesson, we are going to be looking at climate and vegetation. So anything that's written in blue will be the factor, and then anything that is written uh, in black will be what the effect on the various uh, categories are. All right. So here we go. All right. So uh, the climates of Latin America, a couple different climates, different types. Uh, so the temperatures range in various parts of Latin America, depending on where you are. <laughs> All right. So uh, you can go anywhere from bone chilling temperatures uh, in the high mountains of the Andes to sweltering temperatures uh, in the Amazon basin with just a few hundred miles. So it really makes uh, for an interesting uh, climate there. All right. The, in contrast, the Caribbean is usually sunny and warm year round. Uh, that's because of, you know, they're on island nations and they're closer to the equator. Uh, and so on and so forth, all right? Uh, but living in the Caribbean, uh, hurricanes are a big part of life here, and we'll talk a little bit more about those uh, in a few moments. Uh, so some of the different tropical, or some of the different regions of Latin America that we have are this tropical wet climate, which it's hot, humid, uh, and rainy all year long. Okay, so that's gonna be like in the Amazon basin area. Uh, then you have this tropical dry climate, which is hot and gets less, um, this of a frequent rainy season, that's like the pompous area uh, of Latin America, more of where there are plains, uh, you'll see this. And then there's this subtropical climate, um, which is, it's a lot like the southern states. It's not really hot per se, it can get hot, but average temperatures aren't that hot. Uh, but it's, and it doesn't get a lot of rain, but it's muggy kind of year round, okay? So those are just really the three major ones uh, that we'll be focusing on. So here's a map of the climates, and again, uh, as we talked about before, you know, the, the different zones uh, that we have here, okay, so the first three that we really talked about were these top three, all right, the tropical wet, the wet and dry, and the semi-arid, all right, so if we look, you know, a, a major, you know, here's the Amazon basin that we talked about with the last chapter, it takes a big chunk of it. In Central America, there's lots of rainforest as well. All right, so I'm getting, you know, just I want you to, to get into your mind this picture of the physical map that we looked at, where the mountains and the valleys are, and then also the different temperatures, because there's a correlation between the two, which we'll talk about um, in class when we expand upon this. All right. Okay, so what really factors? Uh, what factors affect climate? Well, with elevation is one of the big ones. And what happens is the higher in elevation you go, okay, the colder the temperature will be, well, and the vice versa. So the lower in elevation you go, all right, the warmer you will be, okay, in terms of location. So the factor of location, it depends on where you live and not. Uh, the higher up you go uh, in terms of your location, um, the less crops you can grow, okay? All right, so the higher up we go is where you get maybe your wheats and your barleys, but the lower you go, you're, gonna ab you're able to have um, more citrus fruits, corn, coffee, bananas, sugar cane, uh, crops of that nature, all right? And then wind patterns, this is what uh, brings about rain, okay? So depending where you are, uh, the windier a place doesn't necessarily mean that there'll be more rain. It gives you the opportunity or the chance to have more rain. All right, so here's, again, an example of what we just talked about in terms of location. All right, so, you know, starting off at sea level here and the higher up you go, Okay, depends on what uh, you can grow. So you see down here in the lower elevations, you know, you have banana, sugar cane, rice, cocoa, which is used for chocolate. All right, then you get up a little bit higher, you know, um, coffee, corn, citrus fruits, you know, then the higher up in the mountains you go over here, um, wheat, apples, barley, potatoes, more starchy foods. All right, you get above 10,000 feet, you really can't grow anything. Um, instead, it's just good for grazing 
and then eventually you get above 14,000 feet you can't grow anything at all all right so the vegetation regions so how does climate affect vegetation uh, great example of this is in the Papas region of Argentina all right again it's up in that higher elevation region um, they're only allowed to have grassy plains which are good for cattle raising and herding you can't really grow anything there it's not going to sustain uh, itself it's not going to have a long enough growing cycle so uh, you know the climate influences the vegetation zones depending where you are located within Latin America depends on what you can and cannot grow uh, you know the rainfall <laughs> that influences uh, these effects as well all right so the Caribbean islands get a lot of rain parts of the year so they're able to grow sugarcane coffee bananas all right and it has this warm wherever the weather is warmer they get lots of rain and then again you know talk about elevation so the higher up you go in elevation the less you can grow so palm trees and fruit trees that grow in these coastal plains those areas that are just above sea level to you know sea level and 3,000 feet um, those types of plants will not be able to survive uh, the higher up you go so you you won't see um, fruit trees in Chile or uh, parts of Argentina all right but you will see them in you know Belize and Costa Rica and uh, Cuba and areas of that nature All right, so here's the vegetation regions of Latin America. And again, this correlates to the previous map that we saw in terms of what can, can and can't be grown. And there's a direct resemblance between um, tropical zones, mid-tropical zones, and then the higher elevations. All right, that does it for lesson two. The next one would be lesson three, resources and land use. If you have any questions, bring them to class, otherwise, I hope you took great notes and we will see you.